Good day class! Before we start our first lesson for the first quarter, there are some questions I'd like you to answer. Number one, how many times have you checked your phone this morning? Comment your answer below. Number two, how many status updates have you posted on Facebook today? Again, comment your answer below. Number three, do you follow a celebrity via his or her social media account? Comment your answer down. If you happen to be guilty as charged in most of these questions, chances are you are a digital native. And chances are from the moment you were born, you were surrounded by technology. You are surrounded by ICT. As the popular saying goes, love makes the word go round. But before you start looking for someone to fall in love with, you could argue how the internet has made the word go round for decades. Likewise, in the motivation activity, the internet has probably made your word go round. In this lesson, we will understand how information and communication technologies have improved our lives in such a short period of time. Information and Communication Technology or ICT deals with the use of different communication technologies such as mobile phones, telephone, internet, etc. to locate, save, send, and edit information. When we make a video call, we use the internet. When we send a text or make a call, we use cellular networks. When we run out of load or battery, we use pay phones, which use telephone network. Having a unified way to communicate is one of the goals of ICT. In terms of economics, ICT has saved companies a lot of resources, time, and money with the kind of communication technology they use nowadays. In a similar way, we spend less because of ICT. As it normally costs us a peso to send a text message or SMS, with the internet, we can send multiple messages and only be charged by a fraction. ICT in the Philippines Several international companies dub the Philippines as the ICT hub of Asia. It is no secret that there is a huge growth of ICT-related jobs around the country, one of which is the call center or BPO, Business Process Outsourcing Centers. According to the 2013 edition of Measuring the Information Society by the International Telecommunication Union, there are 106.8 cell phones per 100 Filipinos in the year 2012. That would mean that for every 100 Filipinos you meet, there is a high chance that they have a cell phone and approximately for the 7 of them, they have 2. In a data gathered by the Annual Survey of Philippine Business and Industries NSO, in 2010, the ICT industry shares 19.3% of the total employment population here in the Philippines. To add to the statistics, Time Magazine's The Selfiest Cities Around the World of 2013 places two cities from the Philippines in the top 1 and top 10 spots. The study was conducted using Instagram, a popular photo sharing application. With these numbers, there is no doubt that the Philippines is one of the countries that benefits most out of ICT. The internet has been a vital tool to our modern lives. That is why it is also important to make the best of the internet. When the World Wide Web was invented, most web pages were static. Static, also known as flat page or stationary page, in the sense that the page is as is and cannot be manipulated by the user. The content is also the same for all users. This is referred to as Web 1.0. However, the World Wide Web is more than just static pages. Pretty soon, Web 2.0 came to the picture. Web 2.0 is the evolution of Web 1.0 by adding dynamic web pages. The user is able to see a website differently than others. Examples of Web 2.0 include social networking sites, blogs, wikis, video sharing sites, hosted services, and web applications. Web 2.0 allows users to interact with the page instead of just reading a page. The user may be able to comment or create a user account. Web 2.0 also allows users to use web browsers instead of just using their operating system. 
browsers can now be used for their user interface, application software, and even for file storage. Most websites that we visit today are Web 2.0. The key features of Web 2.0 include Foxonomy Allows users to categorize and classify or arrange information using freely chosen keywords, example is tagging. Rich user experience. Content is dynamic and is responsive to users' input. An example would be a website that shows local content. User participation. The owner of the website is not the only one who is able to put content. Others are able to place content of their own by means of comments, reviews, and evaluation. Long tail. Services that are offered on demand rather than on a one-time purchase. In certain cases, time-based pricing is better than file size-based pricing or vice versa. This is synonymous to subscribing to a data plan that charges you for the amount of time you spent in the internet or a data plan that charges you for the amount of bandwidth you used. Software as a service. Users will subscribe to a software only when needed rather than purchasing them. This is a cheaper option if you do not always need to use a software. For instance, Google Docs is a free web-based application that allows the user to create and edit word processing and spreadsheet documents online. When you need a software, like a word processor, you can purchase it for a one-time huge amount and install it to your computer and it is yours forever. Software as a service allows you to rent a software for a minimal fee. Mass participation. Diverse information sharing through universal web access. Since most users can use the internet, Web 2.0's content is based on people from various cultures. Web 3.0 and the Semantic Web The Semantic Web is a movement led by the World Wide Web Consortium or W3C. The W3C standard encourages web developers to include semantic content in their web pages. The term was coined by the inventor of the World Wide Web, Tim Berners-Lee, also noted that the Semantic Web is a component for Web 3.0. According to the W3C, the Semantic Web provides a common framework that allows data to be shared and reused across application, enterprise, and community boundaries. The aim of Web 3.0 is to have machines or servers understand the user's preferences to be able to deliver web content specifically targeting the user. For example, when doing a web search in Web 2.0, the topmost result is based on the preference of several users who already searched for the item. The search engine then labels it the most common answer to the search query. Though there are instances wherein several preferences are considered like geographic location, Web 3.0 aims to do better. This is through studying personal preferences of an individual user and showing results based on those preferences. The internet is able to predict the best possible answers to your questions by learning from your previous choices. For example, if you search the internet for where is the best place to go shopping, Web 3.0 will aim to give you results depending on how you have made choices in the past. If you have purchased several shoes online, the internet will give you results on the best place with the highest rated shoes around your vicinity. Another example is when you search for the best restaurant to visit in a specific area. First, it may look for your previous visits from other restaurants and if you have rated them, whether good or bad. In return, Web 3.0 will search for restaurants that have a similar menu, good rating, and budget that fits your preference in the past. Web 3.0 is yet to be fully realized because of several problems. Compatibility HTML files and current web browsers could not support Web 3.0. Security The user's security is also in question since the machine is saving his or her preferences. Vastness the World Wide Web already contains billions of web pages. Vagueness. Certain words are imprecise. The words old and small would depend on the user. And fifth, logic. Since machines use logic, there are certain limitations for a computer to be able to predict what the user is referring to at a given time. That would be all for our discussion today. For those who have not yet subscribed to my channel, I'm inviting you to subscribe now so you won't miss every time Teacher Cha upload a new lesson online. Goodbye!